Resource management has always been of pivotal concern to human beings throughout our history, throughout our prehistory. Of course, for most of that history, resource management entailed managing things like food, uh, water, perhaps uh, stretches of land, etc. But uh, resources can take on a somewhat uh, fluid definition. So, for example, in the modern context, electricity and heat and plumbing, these are also resources of a sort. And one could argue, perhaps, that the Internet is a type of resource, in addition to all the obvious things that are considered resources, such as food, water, uh, shelter, etc., Let's not discount, of course, minerals such as gold, diamonds, wealth, uh, mineral resources. That's a a fixed term. So all these things are resources, and they are of uh, varying importance to various people. Some people, depending on their own plight and situation, will assign and ascribe more importance to one thing or the other. And that is perfectly understandable. But why am I talking about resources? Well... As I said, resources are very important. And the primary source of conflict between people and groups of people is the conflict of who gets to gain access to resources, who gets to manage resources, who gains primacy over resources. And why am I talking about that? Well, this video is primarily about the United States and uh, the current state of affairs. I would argue that, at least for many, many decades, the country has not been this divided. Yes, there are historical parallels. um, The civil rights movement, uh, the secession of the South in the 19th century, etc., etc. But in terms of the many heads of division and the directions they go in and the inability to communicate with each other, I would argue that this is a first in the history of the United States. We have so many different political factions, ethnic factions, uh, demographic factions, that it seems almost impossible to get anything done and to have a reasonable discussion about the problems that may or may not be affecting and afflicting the country. Indeed, the core issue here is the inability of people across various swaths of society to reach a compromise. We've reached the point where people cannot even communicate with each other. And why is this? Well, it's fairly obvious. Uh, Hugely polarized political views. Uh, An increasingly diverse uh, number of people uh, of different backgrounds, um, i.e. demographic shifts, etc. Very few of whom actually want to come to the negotiating table and have a discussion about various things. One thing, for example, the the so-called coastal elites, something that this uh, woman, Amy Chua, this Chinese author, has uh, talked about on a few occasions, that you have this huge polarization. This is just one example of many, uh, say, on the, the West Coast, maybe places like California, uh, Washington State, and then places like New York, Connecticut, etc., who have an entirely different ethos in, in how they conduct themselves, their worldview. They enshrine diversity. They enshrine multiculturalism. They believe in sort of hipster-esque types of things like veganism and what have you. And then you have the so-called flyover states where it's a, a very different mentality. And there's, and there's almost no relationship there. And uh, this woman, Amy Chua, has pointed out, and I would largely agree with her, that it's almost as if they're... A different species, or at the very least, different subspecies uh, of a species. It's just one example. Uh, you have demographic shifts where people, frankly speaking, just don't get along. I remember growing up uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and seeing people even back then live in, you could say, demographic enclaves separate from each other. I call this the tolerant society people who don't necessarily like each other, but if they have to stand in a queue in a supermarket, they'll do so and maybe they won't attack each other. The key issue here, of course, and this is also true of various European countries, I think, these days, you you develop this tolerant society. People don't really like each other, 
but they tolerate each other because resource availability. And this is why I mentioned resources in the beginning. Uh, it's another example of divisions that I have seen throughout my life, but also growing divisions. Frankly speaking, I don't think we can fix this anymore. Fix the issue of political, ethnic divisions, uh, demographic divisions, just tribalism, different types of tribalism. Everyone is so ensconced in his own little hole, in his own little echo chamber, be it on the internet or elsewhere, that it's just not going to happen. First off, what does one do if a person belongs to one of these political factions and that does not want to have a discussion, does not want to compromise? And second off, what do you do if you're stuck in medias res, uh, if you're stuck in the middle of things? Well, the former question is actually more easily answered than the latter question. I will attempt to take a whack at the latter question later on. But I think what needs to happen in the United States, and there are plenty of opportunities for this these days, is a type of non-official voluntary uh, balkanization or partitioning of various parts of the country. This is actually a lot less theoretical than it might sound, whereas if I advocated right now, there needs to be some type of hearing or grand discussion in the halls of Congress about the partitioning of the United States, that would that seems almost phantasmagorical and, and completely fictional. I would concede that. But inasmuch as we already have a kind of de facto balkanization, whether it's politically, demographically, ethnically, whatever, uh, I think that would be a decent solution to the many divisions that have sown the seeds of chaos in the United States. So, for example, if you are a so-called coastal elite and you like that type of company, you're very liberal, left-leaning, you like drinking and consuming your soy products, etc., then, you know, maybe that is the uh, ideal for you. Maybe even if you're not a person born or raised on the East or West Coast, um, but you simply enjoy that mentality or you find yourself... Uh, in kinship with those types of people, maybe that's the place you would prefer to live. If you're more of a churchgoer and a more conservative person and you're religious, then the flyover states would be better. I mean, again, almost de facto, effectively, we have these divisions. Uh, and I would say the same thing about these uh, ethnic divisions. There are places in the country that are majority one thing or the other, and if people have a preference for certain ethnic uh, ra or racial uh, demographics, they can go to these places. None of this needs any sort of official legislation. But I think the core issue here, and I, that's what I'm saying, is that people should voluntarily go to the places that uh, they feel most comfortable uh, with, whether it's for political reasons, ethnic, racial reasons, whatever, a combination thereof. Because I don't think we're going to solve this. The, the problem, again, is the question of resources. Who gets access to the resources? And that's the tricky issue where you then need compromise. So, for example, we all know who controls Google and YouTube. Let's be honest, it's the co liberal coastal elites. They have a stranglehold on what's going on. And so, of course, it is a private company. They will uh, inflict, if you will, or interject their their views and their political ideology and philosophy on what's going on on the internet on the web google and youtube uh, are very good at that we all know uh, as a matter of fact you know demonization all these things i have a video even as i speak now even as i make this video that has been sitting there for a couple of days waiting for a review to see whether or not it passes uh the test the the hallowed holy test that they they offer Nonetheless, it's clear that the internet is a resource and YouTube is a resource. And in whose hands control this resource? It is the, the coastal liberal elite. Now, if there were a competitor that could arise and somehow offer some competition, that would be great. I'm not necessarily saying it would be a competitor uh, arguing for my views, but I do think that this is the primary question. It's fairly easily done for people to voluntarily go to places that they feel most comfortable in the company that they feel most comfortable. It's just that there's a dislocation of, of resources and accessibility. 
if you want to live in the middle of nowhere, say in South Dakota, um, you're going to lose access to certain resources, at least some of the, the greater resources. Again, uh, another example would be research and science. Well, it's almost inarguable that most, not all, but most of the top universities and institutions that engage in very important research tend to be located on either the west or east coast and therefore fall within the purview of liberal coastal elites. And the directives they have will also then fall uh, within their sphere of interest and how things are conducted in the types of research and limitations, etc., etc. The final issue here is that in the public space, there's very little acknowledgement that people don't really get along in air quotes anymore. I would argue that people never really got along anyway, that at best there was this tolerant society where people don't talk to each other, but they tolerate each other's existence. And there are all kinds of reasons for that that would uh, go beyond the scope of this video. But let's just say that people in former times got along better. And I would argue that they certainly were able to communicate better and because the internet has been a hugely polarizing thing. And believe it or not, the internet has bled over into real society. That from the mainstream, there's this notion of, of unity and that everybody is the same uh, on any number of fronts, that everyone is an American, right? The problem is if you actually probe some of these people, ask them what an American is, they can't come up with an answer. I've run this experiment on many people, many people. Nobody knows what it means. Uh, one liberal, snobbish, elite person I heard said that to be an American is to follow the rules there and pay your taxes. If that's the definition of American, uh, well, I, it's a very loose one, and it doesn't give anyone a sense of belonging, really. Merely following the rules and paying your taxes is not a recipe for being part of something. Uh, it's a recipe for living someplace, I suppose. And this is a big issue. People want to belong to something, whether it's spiritual, political, racial, whatever. People have that sense. And the, I would argue, inscrutable nature of what it means to be an American does not help that, that craving, that urge. Indeed, the whole reason why we have so many divisions these days across so many different lines is because following the rules and paying your taxes is not a sufficient recipe to create that sense of belonging and well, identity. What does it mean to be an American? Nobody really has a good answer to that. Even this Chinese woman, Amy Chua, sorry, Chinese American, right? You have to use the hyphenated American, Chinese American woman who talks about political tribes and divisions to some degree, as much as a far left liberal person can, talks about uh, an American super identity where you have all these subdivisions, political, ethnic, you know, you can be a Chinese, Italian, Vietnamese, African American, and, and proud of all these identities, and then you have the super identity. But she never once defines what the super identity is. And this is because the super identity doesn't exist. There are all these subdivisions of identity, and that's about it. As many people know, uh, I don't live in the United States, and I have no desire to do so. It's a, it's a hollow term to be an American, I think. And until there's a, a, a good way of defining what it means to be an American and a, a way that makes people feel like they belong and it's inclusive, um, it's not happening. The best case scenario is to, for people to voluntarily balkanize, to partition uh, the United States into various places, enclaves, if you will, where they can live in communities and regions where they feel comfortable. As to that tricky question, if you don't really belong to any faction in particular, such as myself, that's a difficult one. In my own case, for someone who's a European American, I, years and years ago, decided I wanted to live in the old world because that's uh, the personal affinity I have uh, that is strongest. I appreciate the history, the culture, the languages. I've devoted a not insignificant part of my life to understanding and studying these things, be it history, language, literature, etc. So that's the thing I have the greatest kinship with, and so I kind of roll with that. Um, it's not perfect. There are a lot of problems in Europe, but it's a place that I, overall I feel more comfortable living in as opposed to the divided and disunited states of America. But I'm not saying that everyone should do that. That's just my own preference. I know other Americans who 
for whatever reason, enjoy the tropics. They enjoy, for example, Southeast Asia, and they've decided to live and settle there. Uh, just as an example, places like Thailand, Vietnam, etc., where it is very hot and humid. It's a weather that's completely anathema to me personally, but they enjoy that. It's uh, inexpensive to live there, low cost of living. They like the food. They like the... I don't know if they like the culture, but they, I guess they like the culture, but mostly about the climate. You know, it's, it's basically a never-ending summer of sorts, and yeah, they like that, and, and they have their own reasons for enjoying that. Uh, I know other people that live in China, and they're American, or people who've moved to Japan. If you don't fit the mold of whatever the political or, or... If you don't fit the mold of whatever the political or tribal faction might be these days in the United States, that you yourself you can't really conjure an affinity uh, with, then that probably would acquire a bit of examination and see where where ultimately you would like to live. Maybe you enjoy studying Korean, so you'd live there. I know many Americans to this day that live out their days in South Korea because that's just overall a better option in terms of expenses, money, uh, food, culture, safety than the United States. It all really depends. And many people don't really f fit a clear-cut, I belong here or I belong there. So it's, it's really a difficult thing. But one thing I wanted to get across in this video is that the powers that be, the official powers, and I would say anyone who is a normie or part of the mainstream really needs to come to terms with the fact that the United States is more divided now than it's ever been in many ways because of the internet, because of polarization. Uh, people are quite literally oftentimes speaking in tongues to each other, and they don't understand each other's language, and nobody wants to come to the negotiating table. Even better would be an official uh, division of the United States, but that's probably never going to happen. It has never really worked out historically. So voluntary balkanization, voluntary partitioning, to my mind, would be the way to go. And if you don't fit a particular mold, if you don't obsess over ethnostates, if you don't obsess over uh, political ideology, whatever, then you should take into account other factors. And those factors can vary uh, from individual to individual. Some people will want to live in the United States. Other people will want to leave the United States. And I think that's all there is to it, really. But I think the most important takeaway from this particular video is that uh, there is no union in the United States. People are speaking in tongues, and people don't, not only can they not get along, they don't even want to get along. They don't even want to attempt it. So let's just stop pretending that this is the case, and it's time to move on to a more realistic assessment of how things are and what can be done about these divisions. And uh, again, as always, uh, if I'm still alive, I will uh, be uploading more content later this week. Take care, and bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.